Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka, international nail artist and educator here. And today we are going to create a beautiful designs with the transfer foil. You can have a wee preview of it in here. Absolutely amazing, and I show you step by step how to recreate this look. Let's start. <laughs> We are going to do a cool design today. So um, some parts of the nails I'm going to paint black, 183, which is a black ink. And then using my D-liner brush, I'm going to perfect the shape I want to paint. I'm actually really looking forward to the final results of this set. Okay, so just a nice shape. And then give it a cure. And we are going to do the same pattern on this finger. Just so it's quicker and uh, you've got a neater look around the cuticle area, go straight from the bottle. So this way you can push the product to the cuticle area. And then the rest make it with the fine liner brush. And just clean it from the hair. You could also do it in a French or any other style. Okay, and then give it a cure as well. Then this finger. Black on the top, but a different pattern. So just painted half of the nail. And again, D liner brush. When working with the black, you have to watch it because if you apply it too thick, it is going to wrinkle. So like I'm removing the excess of the black from my brush because the black needs to be really thinly applied in. If you've got too much, it's going to wrinkle. Cool. So let's do pinky. Pinky, where are you? On the pinky, we are going to apply the transfer foil gel. On the clear parts. It is going to be pretty difficult pattern to transfer because of the shape we have choose. But I don't want to show you too easy nails. Sometimes we want to have something a bit harder. I'm moving my tip so it's easier for me to press the foil, um, the foil later on. Okay, same on this one. Just a nice and thin layer. And I love this gel because you cannot over cure it, which means like 
um, it's fully cured at 30 seconds, but even if you cure it one minute or if you cure it longer, the product is still going to stick in with no trouble. And then give it a cure. On this nail we're going to go for a full coverage. Because full coverage is a nightmare for every nail technician, so I'll show you how to do it as well. It's not easy, uh, but it is archivable and can look really, really nice. Okay, we are starting with our pinky nail, which is cure. So I've got those uh, transfer foil, which is absolutely fantastic uh, looking one. And I'm just picking up the part of the design I want to transfer in there. Actually, to make my life easier. Yeah, this is cool. Okay, to make my life easier, this is a good trick for you guys. I'm just going to cut out the shape where I've got the black gel polish. Because first of all, I thought I'm going just to wipe the excess off. Uh, from the black gel polish where the foil might transfer as well because the foil sometimes transfer to the gel polish as well but what I did I have cut out the shape maybe it's not perfect but just about and then press it like wrapped it really nicely in so I'm I'm pretty sure the foil some parts of foil are going to stick in into the black as well but I'm not worried about it because we will clean it really easily you could also use the silicone tool to wrap the foil well. Definitely much easier process uh, to do it on the client than it is on those tips which are not as greatly secured as we would want. Okay, and then once you're happy and you have pressed it at all, you can gently start lifting it off. And so just pull the foil and the blue tack from it. And it actually doesn't matter because we have used the black background, so it is awesome. I'm just going to use a drop of the blue scrap. Because the foil transfer a little bit on this part as well but it's not a big deal we can nicely clean it I'm using just a black to fill up the corner and then give it a flash cure okay this one is really easy one so I'm just going to place the transfer foil in. Wrap this well. So I'm fighting with two things. One is a tip, which is constantly moving. There we are. Okay, make sure it is really nicely pressed down. You don't have to use a lot of um, pressure to do so. It's just to make sure it's kind of all attached in. And then once you're happy, just lift it off. Then we've got this one, which is going to be more difficult. And then the fill pattern one. So let's do maybe the fill pattern one first. Just so we can use, oh no, just so we can use a really nice part of the foil. So you can see it, I already attached a part of the foil by the mistake. But what is awesome, even if I clean it, the gel is still going to work. So I'm using a blue scrap clean the mistake 
and then the foil will stick in here as well no problem so even if you touch it by accident with your finger or something's happen I'm picking up a nice pattern and then give it a massage so the full coverage tips is really difficult because the tip the needle is really carved like I think even those tips are more carved than the natural needles are so we really need to iron it and it's not about the pressure but it's about getting rid of any kind of bends in the foil okay so this tool is really useful of smoothing it out it's almost like uh, applying a wallpaper on the wall and you need to get rid of the air which might be there so you don't have an air bubble okay so really get rid of this air And then once you're sure that you have pressed the foil everywhere, you can start lifting it off. Do it slowly, because uh, if there will be a place which didn't attach by the first time, you can always go back. Okay. So I'm just pulling the form, and here I had the bend, so I'm very careful there to check if it's transfer. Yes, it did transfer. You can almost kind of go out. Uh, go back so you can see it I've got full coverage in, in this places here but then the place where you had some air bubble you can just go back in there and this way we got a nice coverage and then lift another part so do it slowly because this way you can pick up any bends and just touch them up when the form uh, when the foil is a little bit more loose so it's a time consuming process but at the same time it saves us lots of time uh, i would say as well because uh, doing soldiers design freehand would take much much longer okay on this one we are going again for this uh, v-shaped look So again, I might just cut it out, okay, so let me show you, I'm going to cut it and use this part. So cut the triangle out. And then transfer it. Okay, place in the right places. So this part is harder because of the triangle shape, but it's easier at the same time because uh, we are not creating as many air bubbles because it's not a full coverage. I definitely need to guys uh, do that. I can't wait to, to use it on the real clients because I think it's just so much easier. Like even when I was doing my family, it was so easy, straightforward, because obviously it's solid compared to the wobbly tips on the stand <laughs> like I can't even there we are imagine the stand breaks now you cannot really iron it because the tip is all moving so so very difficult to do it on the tip Okay, now take a blue scrub and just clean the parts where the foil has stick into the black. You could use it also the brush to do so. And 
and then just the same like we did it with the first one just touch up the place where we had to cut it out and then give it a cure we also need to decorate it with some crystals so I'm going to use some Swarovski crystals and let's start from this new so I'm just cleaning my uh, ring with the blue scrub to remove the black drop of the base gel where are you base gel is here And then using an old brush, I'm just going to put the base gel where I want the gems. Pick up some nice ones. Actually, because this is a middle finger, I'm thinking going pretty large even. Why not? So if we go in large, more base gel. Okay, place only those two crystals in and give it a flash cure. We want to secure them so they don't move. Then this one, lots of gems. Oh, we're going to use this one and the drop. It's just going really nice into those uh, shape. Give it a flash cure. What else we've got? We've got this one. Oh, my base has cured, hit the light. So here, I think I really like this uh, drop shape. And I think this rose gold looks really nice in combination with black too. Give it a cure. Okay. Pinky, pinky. So on the pinky, we don't want to overdo it. The things like pinky is gentle, Neil. She says don't overdo it. And then she will slap like a million crystals in. Caviar beads. Not too many, like just a couple. I think the caviar beads makes any design look uh, much nicer, much more complicated as well, and much more time consuming. But they last with the base gel like they really last the caviar beads. Okay, and give it a flash cure. I think it's more it looks also more oriental. I'm, I'm keep curing my base gel. So just three beads. Mm 
move them into the right place and then give it a flash cure one on the bottom and then we can top coat this one i'll also show you how i'm cleaning as well the crystals because obviously when we're using the waxing pen like or or the crystal katanas they uh, quite often stain the crystals with the excess of the wax so i'm always kind of give them a wee polish at the end so they're nicer and shinier what we've got in here here we've got large crystal So I need something smaller on the sides. No, oh, that's not the rose gold. And because this crystal is much larger, I don't want to use the caviar beads because they would just disappear in there. So I'm doing the same pattern with the smaller crystals. Okay, place them nice. This one is going to be just too much. Okay, then give it a flash cure. Now we've got some more lines in this design and we need to kind of even them out. So I'm going to show you what we will do for that. Um, yes, okay, so I need some rose gold. Now I'm going to use some eyeshadow magic mirror powder. I'm not a fan of the mirror powders in an eyeshadow form because I'm feeling like they are not lasting as well as any other pigments. But what we are going to do is we will create a perfect, perfect shade for our design. So what I'm going to do is using um, either an old brush or any other tool, just pick up a small amount of this pigment at a drop of the top coat. Okay, drop of the top coat, mix it well to get the color you want to use it. Okay, so it's like a rosy gold. Then clean my deliner brush and we are going to paint some nice lines. just to define the design. And you can see it, we have actually created really exactly the same color, which is awesome. Nice and thin line.
I would feel like putting a caviar bits in there and the slime place would be too heavy. That's why I think doing a line with the chrome is a much better option. You don't have to do it, obviously, like I just wanted to show the shape more. Especially on this one night as well. But yeah, I definitely cannot wait to use it on the clients, like so many different nice ideas and possibilities. Now let's apply the top coats or maybe do an outline here as well. Why not? Yes. Because the, we cannot put the crystals in here, it would be just obviously too much. So we are just going to outline it with the rose gold. It's almost invisible, but just when you look it closer, I think it's exchanged this design. Almost like a frame. It will also protect the edges of the foil as well. And then give it a flash cure. Let's apply the top coat and see the final results. Sorry, to be able to see the final results, I need to have a clean desk. Just at least a little bit. So let's start with the pinky. Yeah, it looks awesome. Pinky looks awesome and is finished. Apply the top coat, don't put it on top of the crystals. I love it and I love it how nicely it blends in. It looks, it really looks like a freehand painting. And I think it's quicker, I think it would take me longer to freehand it. Okay, then we've got the next one. Yeah, it looks like it's all joined in and... Just remove the blue tack. Cut the free edge like really well. If you're scared the foil might come off, you can even add it an extra top coat. That's what I did now, just an extra amount. This one looks really nice, the flower pattern. Give it a clear. And the one with the full coverage. You can see it how much nicer it is once the top coat goes over it. 
So you've got two choices now for a transfer foil. What I'm doing is I'm applying a decent amount of the top coat and then add another scoop of the top coat, then give it a cure. So I have kind of like applied two layers of the top coat, just a thicker one. Uh, but what else you could do, you could use the top coat with the inhibition layer. Do I have one here? I should. Got too many top coats here. Oh, that's a new high shine. I was searching for it. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, no, that's a base gel. Anyway, you can use the um, soak of top gel and then high shine on top of it because the top coat with the inhibition layer has those in inhibition layers, so the next top coat is going to stick in. Do not, do not apply top coat, dry top coat, top coat with no inhibition layer on top of the top coat with, inhib with no inhibition layer because uh, the gel likes either rough or sticky surface and the dry top coat it's just a dry top coat. It doesn't have roughiness and it doesn't have the stickiness, so it's not going to last as well. Okay, we, we shouldn't be applying two times high shine. One on top of another. Okay, Pinky. Pinky, where are you? Pinky is here. I'm just going to wait two seconds before I touch these tips. Like, I really don't want to lose the shine. This is another tip for you. Um, if you want them to be nice and shiny, just wait a couple seconds. And also you can see there is a wax on top of my gem. So I'm using either a sponge or, uh, you know, like a glass cleaner. Any kind of material is good to kind of give it a wipe. Like really wipe it off this wax from the crystals so they're nice and shinier. Okay. Then my tip also has cooled down so I can touch it with my fingers without of losing the shine. And the first one is ready, absolutely stunning. There we are, I think that's the better. Oh, that's that's it, that's awesome view now. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. <clears throat> this part is always fun, like seeing all of them all together. So again, I don't want to touch it. I don't like this part, like you're seeing me like playing with this blue tag. Uh, yeah, it is essential part. Sorry, guys. There we are. Again, I'm trying not to touch the top coat yet. So I'm always very clumsy <laughs> at this part. I think we need to start doing a cut in there maybe and just stop the camera and let the tips cool down. Okay, just clean it. Let's go next one. So I show you this one. The other ones will cool down a little bit. I really need them to cool down. Yeah, this is nice. I'm so zooming in. <laughs> okay, it's almost like a fan. Then we've got this finger. I think I will change the order of them. And this one. So I always need to pull out a little bit of the blue tack. Yeah, I will change it. There we are. So the ring finger will be the same like a thumb which means no gems, full cover. And then we've got gems in here, and that looks nice. Let me clean it, it really well. We want the gems to be nice and shiny. Yeah, once the top coat cool down, I will clean it again. And that's the set which we have created today. Absolutely amazing. It looks so f like it looks like uh, hand painted. Yeah, it it even doesn't look like a transfer foil like at all. Yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think of this set. Uh, I really enjoy it playing with it. Like I mean, there have been tricky parts of it, but I'm sure I'm going to use it uh, this technique in the salon as well. I hope you have really enjoyed it. Glittery hats and bye for now.